Okay, so first thing we're going to do, and if you've done this, you can ignore it. But if you haven't done it, we have to make sure we copy our preferences. So I'm going to the Start menu, going to Documents to get to my D drive. And I'm going to go to the Maya folder, and I'm going to delete, if it's there, the 2015 folder. In my case, it's not there, so you don't have to delete it. Okay, then I'm going to go back to the D drive, back to my Sarcona folder, and I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy my preferences, wherever you put your preferences. Mine are inside the 2540 folder. Okay, so I'm copying them back on the D drive, back in Maya, and then pasting. Okay, that way I've restored my preferences. Everyone's good so far? Yes? Yes. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the resources drive. You should see the resources in the left column of your screen. On the resources drive in 2540, there is a folder called stick. Stick is what I just showed, but it's the project file for it. So we're going to hit control C to copy that. FYI, we can write to our student drive now, so we should be good there. Uh, we're going to go back to our D drive back to our folder, back to the 2540, back to work, and then we're going to paste it inside there. Okay, and then once you've pasted it, rename it with your last name at the front of it. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to File, Set Project, and we're not going to set it right to stick because inside the stick folder is the actual stick project folder. Okay, so we're going to set our project to that stick folder inside it. Okay, and then we're just going to go to File Open or Control O or whatever. Um, you're going to open up Stick Rig. Okay, so open up Stick Rig. I'm going to open up stick anim just so I can show you some of the things about the stick rig animation. Okay, so this rig um, is animated using what are called animation layers. And if you think of animation layers in a way that you're kind of like taking different takes of an animation. Uh, I have the ball bouncing one way, and then I'm like, well, I want to try something different, but I don't want to destroy that. I want to be able to easily swap between them the, the animations. So I can take that one animation and put it on a layer. And then I can make a new animation on a different layer, and a new animation on a different layer. And then I can just easily toggle between these different things. So right now I'm on the boring uh, animation layer. So if I hit play, that's the boring one. That's where everything's rotating exactly the same. And then I can turn it off and turn on the best one and then we can see the best one and how this one moves. Okay, um, I can also mix between them. In this case it's not going to help. It'll actually probably cause some issues. Yeah, there it goes. Through the ground. Okay, but it is possible to also mix them too. If I have a character and I wanted to uh, let's say control all my blinking on a separate layer so I could just turn that off or I wanted to have all of his leg motion on a separate layer, I could. Okay. So this is just a cool way to be able to organize our stuff um, and then add little touches to it. Sometimes our animation could be super complex and we just want to be able to dumb it down so we can use animation layers to do that kind of stuff. I could have, if I wanted to, animate each one of these pieces on a separate animation layer, but there's not really a use for it. Okay, so let me open up the one that you guys have, which is stick rig. And what we're gonna see with this stick rig is that he has these curves around the pieces, okay? These curves are how we're going to move them. We are not going to grab any of the geometry and try to move any of the geometry, okay? A good rig basically allows you to go into the scene, grab only what you need to animate the stuff, and then animate that stuff without screwing up the rest of it, okay? So you'll see, I can't grab the ground and accidentally move it. I can't grab anything but the objects here to do that. Okay. You'll also see that I have this little pound sign thing here. Uh, and if I click on that, 
I have these controls, translates and rotates. I don't have any scales, so if I went to the scale, um, I can't scale this thing at all, even though these are highlighted. If I go to rotate, I can rotate the whole thing. Uh, but I can't do any scaling. If I click on this guy, I can only rotate in the Z. I can't accidentally rotate in the Y or the X direction. I can't move this away from here. I can't scale that thing. Okay. So this is, as far as you know, we've been using this thing, is pretty indestructible. Okay. It's very difficult to go through. Now it's not saying that you couldn't. There are ways around everything. If I click on this and group it, then I can scale all these pieces and then I've broken it. Okay, but hopefully you wouldn't inadvertently group something and then start scaling it up. <clears throat> That's the hope. Okay. Um, also, if we wanted to grab the geometry, because eventually you're going to be texturing this stuff, um, I'll use the outliner and then I can grab the geometry still. Okay. So there are ways around this stuff, but ideally we're right here in our, in our workflow. We're animating stuff. We typically shouldn't have that problem. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to animate this thing, all right? Now you're, as, a, as amateur animators, your first bet is to go in here and just start setting keys. Just set keys on everything, okay? Just grab all these pieces and set some keys and then see what happens and then call the instructor over, <laughs> okay? But what we want to do is take this into a method uh, approach. We're going to start at the bottom one and we're going to work our way up. We're going to get the bottom animation right and then we'll get the middle one right, and then we'll get the next, and then we'll get the top. Okay, that's how we're going to approach this. Um, so the first thing we need to do is just double check our settings. Sometimes they change, whatever. So next to this key, we're going to go to the animation preferences, and we want to make sure that we're set to real time. Okay, we want to make sure we're set to real time because if we animate this whole thing out and we realize, whoops, we're like going crazy. Uh, crazy quick, then it'll do that. Now mine's set to 24. Yours should be set to 30, I think, right? Is it set to 30? No? It is 24? I thought we set it. Maybe not. All right. So we're going to set it to 30. We're going to go up to settings. And under time, we're going to set the time to NTSC 30 frames per second. Okay. And what this is going to allow us to do is have, you know, those extra couple frames to work with each second. So now we go back down to time slider, and of course it should say real time 30 frames per second, and then we can save. There we go. Okay, everyone's good there? 30 frames per second, real time? Cool. All right, so now we're gonna make sure that we set our first keyframe on frame one. If you look again, you'll see that mine says 1.25. We can't set a keyframe, we could, but we shouldn't set a keyframe at 1.25. So we'll just reset our playback range to one and one. And then make sure we're actually on frame one, not 1.25. Uh, we will need more than 30 frames. Right now we're at 30. The, so let's set this to 120, okay? We may not use 120, but we'll just set it to 120 for now. Okay. So we're going to first go to frame one, and we're going to set our first keyframe at frame one for this object. Now before, remember, we had to go up to the channel box and right click and say key selected, okay? Because there's only one item up there, we don't have to do that. Because it's locked out, we can just hit S. And now we've increased our productivity tenfold, okay? So we've set our first keyframe, it's right here. So we have to give this thing a purpose. Why is it here and then starting to fall down? Okay, we don't want it to go all the way back down or have you know drop down with a lot of speed. It should because it's standing here. It should just gradually like it's fallen, just kind of like drips down. All right, so we're gonna go up to let's say frame 15. So we click on frame 15. We click on the rotate Z and we rotate it down however far we think it should rotate down. Okay. Now we have to keep in mind too, because we're animating this thing in stages, that all of these other ones are also going to be rotating downward. Okay. So I can't go like this because I want it to go down that far. Because this guy and this guy and this guy 
are all going to be rotating down and then they're going to go into the ground. Okay, so I want to make sure I kind of keep this maybe at a 45. Or 50. A 50 looks good. All right, so we have two keyframes now. One is at frame one for the thing being straight up and down, and then the other one is at frame 15 for that base just being rotated 50 ish degrees. Okay, it doesn't matter that we're 50.515 as long as we're, you know, it looks good. Okay, so now we're going to go and go to the other direction. Now we have to do a little bit of math here because it should make sense. Okay, if it started up vertical and then we dropped it down in 15 frames to 50 degrees, how long is it going to take for that to come over to the other side? Okay, so if we said 15 frames is how long it took to go there, then it should be no more than 30 frames, I would think, to pop over to the other side. All right, especially if this thing is slowing down, which it's going to. It just kind of like this is the biggest movement it's going to have. So let's take this to less than 30 frames plus 15. So less than 45 frames. So let's go to 40. Let's just go to 40. Okay, and we'll flip it over to the other side. And again, because it's slowing down, it's not going to go up to 50. Okay, it's going to go to um, say 45 or 40. 40 looks good. Okay, so we'll set a key at 40 with it about negative 40. Okay, so now if we just scrub our animation, we should just see that. Just side to side. One side, the other side. Are we good so far? Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing. It took 25 frames to go from one side to the other. So now it should go how many frames to the next one? 20, right. It's not, it's not rocket science, just 20. So we'll go up to frame 60, and then we'll pull this down to something less than 40, right? So let's go to 30 and set a key. Okay. Everyone's with me so far? So 75 gets negative 20, 85 gets 10. And 90 gets 0. All right. So this is obviously this is going to be a boring animation. <clears throat> It's just tick tocking back and forth like that. Okay, so now comes uh, the evaluation stage of this, where we can kind of look at it and see if right away, if we're noticing anything, just like crazy off, just like this is not functioning the way it should. Okay, so far the end is the part that worries me the most, just because it just kind of goes there and then just like cuts away. All right. So we're going to fix the end. The rest of it seems like it's okay. It's not perfect, but it's okay. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this one. I just want to get the foundation, and then we'll do the other stuff. All right, so I'm going to go to the end where it's at 90, and I'm going to have it go a little bit past this. So I'm going to have it go a little bit past 90. Let's say I'm at negative 6. Okay. I'll set a key. Oops. Then I'll go up a couple frames. Go the other way up another frame and then set it back to zero. Okay, so now we have this animation. It still needs some work. It seems like maybe it's going a little bit too quick at the end. We really want to tweak some of those settings uh, and start to work with more of the artistic. How do we get these things to time out so it doesn't look so mathematical, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to hit stop and rewind it. And we're going to open up the dope sheet. So in your shelf, if you have your shelf items still listed here, you can click DS for dope sheet, or you can go to window, animation editor, dope sheet. Okay. 
the dope sheet has listed all of the keyframes that we ha currently have uh, in our scene. Okay, uh, we can now move them around to retime our stuff out. So if we're like, okay, well, it's good here, but I really want to change the timing, how quick it moves from this to this, we can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of compress my dope sheet like that. Okay, that way I can still see my animation here. I'm also going to take my grid off. This is annoying. Display grid, that goes away. And I'll even do Alt B to change my background color to black. That way I can see that better. There we go. Okay. So, compress my grid, or compress my dope sheet, hide the grid, black background so I can see it better. Voila. Uh, I'm going to go to the Move tool, W, and I can just uh, marquee or click on these things. Nope, it's marquee. Marquee these things and just middle mouse button drag it where I want it to go. So if I see that, you know, uh, at the end especially, and the zoom works the same way, at the end I'm a little bit too quick. So over here I can just grab these and just start sliding these over just to allow a little bit more space between them. Okay? So grab your end keyframes. I just grabbed the end three and just adjusted them a little bit. Just gave a little bit more space to them. Yes, middle mouse. All right. Now the important thing with this is that any of this is tweakable at any stage. You never want to set too many keyframes uh, that it becomes unmanageable. We're only setting one keyframe at a time using that rotate Z specifically so that we don't set a thousand keyframes. If we set a thousand keyframes it becomes really unmanageable to try to edit any of this stuff. Okay. So hit stop, rewind it. You can always go back and tweak this stuff more. Okay. Uh, now we're going to go down to the next stage, which is the next uh, ramp thing here. Okay. Uh, before we do, let's save our scene, but do a save as. Okay. Do a save save as. Put your last name in this file. So I'm going to put Sarcona Stick Rig playing around underscore zero one. Get in the habit of naming yours with your name and also making iterations 01, 02, 03. That way you know which one you left off on. So Sarcona, Stick Rig, Playing Around, 01. The purpose of this is just to get used to using the Stick Rig, setting some keyframes, adjusting those values of the keyframes. And even though our homework assignment doesn't have the typing thing until the very end, feel free in your spare time to go and practice typing, okay? I'm closing the dope sheet. I'm going to start working on the second one. Um, I'm making note mentally, I've already made it up there, of where things are happening, okay? So as I set keyframes, I have to keep an eye out for this to see when stuff happens. Um, I also have to keep in mind how is this thing doing what it's doing? How are, how is the order of this thing rotating? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're essentially going to put in the same keyframes that we did for the other one and then we're just going to adjust it so that they look correct. Okay. So just go through and I'm going to go to frame 1. This is at 0. I set a key. I'm going to go to frame 15. Set this one to 50 and set a key. Go to frame 40. You get the idea. And set a key.
So what's happening so far is that all we've done is just copied our keys. Here's the keyframes for the first one, copied them for the second one. Now there's ways that we can actually copy keyframes and paste them on other stuff, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing for this guy and the same thing for that guy here, and then we can go through and tweak it all, all right? Uh, and it might seem like a roundabout way, but this is really understanding how we can manipulate this, this stuff. We're learning the tools about this guy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on one of these pieces that we've keyframed, and then we're gonna go to frame one. Okay, so I'm at frame one, I've clicked on one of these pieces, I'm going to right click on the rotate Z, and I'm gonna say copy selected. Okay, so I've clicked on that piece, I'm at frame one, I've copied selected, and then I should be able to do the exact same thing we've always done since we started using computers, which is click on something else, right click, and then paste selected. And I'm just gonna do that to the other two pieces. All right, so everyone's at this stage where we have all four of them doing the exact same thing, okay? This is the boring one, right? This was that first one that we did where everything moves the exact same amount. Eventually what we have to do is start to taper some of these so that they move less or more, or however it works out, okay? So what we're gonna do is, let's think about it first, is what should be the first thing that moves? I mean, does the whole thing move? Or does the top really start to bend down and then the bottom starts and it kind of trickles down? Okay, which one? The second one, the second one right. Starts at the top, that top one bends, and then the next one bends and the next one bends, okay? Just like your body, if my arm is out like this and I wanted to move my arm, typically my hand's the first thing to go, okay? Because the hand is kind of driving that force of what's moving, even though the shoulder is what's essentially moving everything. All right, so we're gonna make sure that this guy here at the very top is the first thing to move. Then it's gonna be this guy, then it's gonna be this guy, then it's gonna be that guy, okay? So we're gonna go to the dope sheet again. And again, window, animation editor is dope sheet, or just click the DS. Okay, and if we click these things in order, you'll see how they populate inside here, inside the dope sheet, so that we can see all of those keys. And I can also see that I made a boo-boo and one of these must be over a notch. There we go. Okay, so now what I can do is just do this. I can literally just take this one and just offset it a couple frames. Take this one, offset it a couple frames. Take that one, offset it a couple frames. Okay, so now if we just look at this, just that first part. This here seems just a bit more alive. We have a little bit more like feeling to this because we feel like there's an offset. We feel like there's a little bit more drive <laughs> in how these things are falling. And it's subtle. I mean, it's only two frames. It's a subtle thing. Obviously, we're going a little bit too rotation-y here. Okay, everything's rotating too much. We can fix that too, but we'll do it later. We can't do it in the dope sheet. We would do it in the graph editor. Yes, ma'am. What was that? Oh, I was moving 76. I was lying then. <laughs> 76 probably looked wonderful. Let me go back to that. <laughs> Mentally, yeah, I'm sure it was weird. Let's just get that over. There we go. So now let's see. There we go. That is much better. <laughs> Okay, so now we can definitely, thank you, see the difference there. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna propagate these settings to other stuff, all right? Now we have to keep in mind though that the top is what's moving it, but the top's not gonna be what's driving it the other way, okay? There's no way that the top could then drive it. If this thing, I don't know why I grab different props, I need more props. Uh, if this thing falls it down like this and the whole thing goes, then this arm is gonna be what flings it over to the other side, okay? So now we're getting into the different kinds of animation and literally just moving these keyframes is going to dictate that. It's gonna tell that story. 
All right, so then we're gonna go to the next one. And here, let's see what this is. This is it being here and then starting to fling over to the other side. So what should start moving first once we get to the other side, once we get to frame 15? The bottom, okay? So now it's gonna be a little bit of the opposite in the fact that the bottom one is gonna be the closest one and then these ones are gonna be like that, staircasing out, okay? So now we're gonna take this one, make sure I'm at frame 15, and scoot it over two frames. Scoot this over two frames. Scoot that over two frames. All right, so now if you look at that, I mean that's, it comes down. You can tell there's some weight here. You can tell like that's what's causing it to fall down is that top one somehow caught a breeze of wind and just started falling. But then right here, we're starting to pick back up and you can see that that, top, that bottom one right here, it starts moving before the top one is even finished, okay? And we can tell that up here. If you look at these keyframes, this top one has a really long drop, okay? There's a, it's dropping for a long time, it's rotating for a long time. Second one, not so much, the third one, not so much, and the bottom one is just rotating a little bit. There's a lot of tension in that bottom one. And that's what's gonna cause it to flip over to the other side. So now let's look at this again and say, okay, well, what's gonna happen here? Which one should get to the end of this first? Okay, as far as what's rotating, to the top of the bottom, 50-50 guess. The bottom. <laughs> okay, the bottom's gonna get there first because like I said, the bottom has so much tension, it's gonna go like that and literally like fling the other ones over to it, okay? So same thing, let's just go down to the next one. The bottom's gonna get there first, so obviously the bottom has to get there first. But in this case, I'm pulling it backwards. See, I'm not going forward, I'm going back. Oops, let me start the other way. Go two this way, two that way, two that way. Okay, so that one looks pretty good. It's turning into a little sexy animation. <laughs> All right, and then this one, same thing. What's going to happen? What's going to stop moving first? The bottom again. So we do the exact same thing. All we have to do is just make sure that the bottom gets there first. So we just take this one, pull it back a couple, pull it back a couple, pull it back a couple. And I think you get the gist for the rest of this. It's going to be the bottom every time. Just to show you, if I click on these, and I don't know which graph is which, if I click on one of these, it'll tell me this point belongs to this curve. You can see the little blue notch here. Uh, that means that I have, in my case, the bottom one selected because that was the last one. So if I didn't want this one to move as much, I could pull that graph down. And then grab the next one, pull that one down. Grab the next one, pull that one down. Oops. One little funny thing about the graph editor um, is when we're trying to select stuff, sometimes you're out here and you're marquee it and it just moves it. So you just have to be careful. Okay? So I can go through this and tweak each of these and adjust how much that each one's moving. Come on. There we go. 
okay? And what that will do is, again, just give me another level of uh, difference in how they're rotating. Okay, and again, it's just part of that telling a story, part of going through and trying to figure out how we want it to look. We don't want to move the front of this. We want it to start at zero, and we want to make sure it ends at zero. So it might be difficult to see, but we can actually zoom in here and see the ends of the curve. I'm going to grab them and just make sure that their value here is set to zero. Okay, and at the beginning as well, they were set to zero which they are, okay? If it's pink, just a little color trivia, if it's pink, that means that each one of the things you have selected is a different value. So my time here being seven and having that salmon color means that I've selected several objects and each one have a different value. Uh, the value, the um, zero here is not colored because it's not a different value. All right, and wherever you're at right now, step away from it <laughs> so we can show you the next thing, okay? You can come back and work on this some more. This one we're not turning in. This is just to get you comfortable with using the tools, okay? The next one you're going to be turning in. Um, so we're going to go, the animation essentially is done. We could tweak it and tweak it and tweak it <clears throat> all night long and just keep playing with it. Typically, like at a studio, they literally, you know, they have a deadline and they just do it as good as they can until the deadline and they turn it in, they get their notes and they adjust it and go back and forth, back and forth until it's done. Um, and they're spending 40, 50, 60, 70 hours on some of their animations and they're working on them like weeks and weeks at a time, okay? So I don't want you to think that everything that we're doing now is just going to be like super easy and it's just going to translate into it. It's gradually going to get harder and harder. So this little exercise that we're doing now, if you're not fully comfortable with it, I recommend doing it at least once or twice or three or however many times it takes to get comfortable with setting keys, using the dope sheet, using uh, the graph editor in just those minute ways of just adjusting things. The biggest thing is being able to see or visualize what should be happening and then applying that. But it's literally this. You want something to move fast, keyframes are close together. You want it to move slow, keyframes are further apart. Okay, if you just remember those two things, that makes it easier, okay? Um, so now, when we start rendering our stuff out, I'm gonna go through a, a full-blown video on uh, uh, rendering our stuff out. Um, but for this one, I'm just gonna show this real quick. Everything we render in this class will be done in Mental Ray, okay? Um, with Mental Ray, we have a lot more options, a lot more ability to make things nice, uh, nice looking. Um, we have some motion blur settings inside here. Oops. We have motion steps. Okay, and you can see there that has motion blur on it. I'm gonna make it brighter so you can see it because it's hard to on the screen. Hopefully that'll be a bit brighter. Good, okay. So, um, so this is motion blur. I've turned it on. This is how simple motion blur is. We just turn it on. Um, and then we add motion steps. And these motion steps are what are going to control how smooth this is. If we have something going from here to there within a frame, um, there's a lot of motion in there that it has to blur. So we add motion steps to help smooth out that transition there. So in a lot of these areas, we're going to see uh, where we have a lot of motion, uh, we're going to get that blurriness. So I'm going to just take this up. There you go. A lot of motion right there. Let's just look at that. There we go. Okay. So some of these pieces eventually are going to be blurred. So it, it really adds to that piece. I just wanted to show that we are going to add motion blur to all of these pieces as well. Um, this rendering, even though it took two seconds, um, once we add actual lights and actual textures and the whole gamut of things, it's going to take more time to render these things out. It might be 
a minute a frame. Probably not a minute a frame, but let's just pretend it is, okay? Um, so we want to just be cautious of that or aware of that whole process. All right. Um, the other thing, uh, that was it, the texturing of these. When we start texturing these kinds of things, remember, we can't touch the geometry itself. We have to go through the outliner to do that. Um, and the way that this thing is rigged, it's rigged in such a way that if I were to grab this initial part and assign a material to it, I'm just assigning a whatever material, and I'll make this red, you'll see that all the parts get that material because I've grabbed the top and it assigns it to everything below it. So everything inside here has to be basically textured from the top down to the bottom. Okay, I can't grab all the hinges and assign one texture to them and then go and grab the sticks and assign another texture to them because it just doesn't work like that. Okay. So we'll go through a whole thing on that just so as you start working on these you're just aware that you can't really texture these things yet all right, or add coloring to them yet. If it helps to add color to these then go ahead and grab the root, drop a color on it so it's easier and just leave it as, at that for now. All right, so I'm going to save this. All right, so now for your assignment part of this, <clears throat> what you're going to do is you're going to reopen up that first file. Oops. You don't need to do it right now. Um, and you're going to take this and now add motion to this, okay? So we're going to take this guy here, and he's going to go this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. This way. Just uh, sandwich itself in or, or get really low. Um, so your principles that you learn during this apply to that. Okay. Usually people watch, do the first video. It's a huge success. Everyone right now has something that is pretty decently animated. Okay. Uh, but when we get into doing this on our own, your first instinct is to just grab everything and just set keys for everything and then just try to do it that way. It's not going to work. You start at the bottom and you work your way up. We start here. I'm setting a key. Uh, I'm going to go up to, let's say, and these are just rough numbers. Okay, anytime I do animation, it's rough numbers until you figure it out, until you figure out how fast something's going to move. So I'm going to 20. I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to go to. How many total frames do you want? It's all going to depend. It's all on your own animation as far as how many frames you end up with. Some, pe some of you are going to have. 200 frames, some of you might have 140 frames, okay? As long as it looks nice, that's all I care about. So here we're going from this side, and again, I'm looking at it, here's zero. This is moving to negative 11. And when I move to this side, it should be less than 11, right? So it's eight. And then I'm just gonna keep going. So I would go with this. Uh, what was that? That was... 24 for 28 frames. So I would go less than 28 frames. I'm just going to estimate there and pull this over to about six. I'm going to go less than that. Pull this over to about four. Go less than that. Now here's what, uh, well, I'll set this first and I'll show you what professional animators would do. So let's just pretend that's good. Okay, so I didn't even pay attention where these are at. Obviously, some of these have bigger gaps, some of these have smaller gaps. So, what I would do is just kind of go through and set up the keys. Then I can use the graph editor, not even the graph editor, use the dope sheet and just look at my keyframes and say, okay, here I have so many. This has to be about there. That's good. This should be a little bit less. That's good there. That's good there. This has to be a little bit less, so I'll grab all of these. And you can see how I'm just kind of not even paying attention to what's happening in this. I'm just paying attention to big gap should go littler, 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 littler until we meet it at that spot, okay? So a professional animator would actually do this exact process where they would go through, and some of them don't even use Maya's interface like this. They'll just go in the graph editor and literally draw out, I want it to do this. 
and that's what it'll do because you just know exactly what it's supposed to do. So now just by setting up this bottom part and spacing these things out the way I did, I'll go in the graph editor too, and if I look at this, I'm looking at a lot of stuff I don't need. Okay, um, I only moved it in this one direction, just in Translate X. I don't need any of these guys, so I can literally just delete those. There we go. This, if you remember your graph from the one that we're currently on, started off big and got super small. Same thing should be happening here. Starts off big and it gets super small. So again, I'm just tweaking these. until this gets tinier and tinier. Come on. There we go. All right. So now all I've done, I've set keyframes. I've made sure that this one goes from big to small. I've made sure that my gaps in the dope sheet go from big to small. And now just looking at this, Pretty good. Okay, the end part could use a little bit more, uh, a little bit quicker movement here. Kind of drags on right at the end. There we go. Let's see that again. Okay. It's a little bit too quick, so let me take these values down. Right there. There we go. Okay, I may add another one right after this. Oops, just want to set the one keyframe. Zero key. There. Okay, so you can see in this instance, I have 130 frames. You could have more oscillations back and forth, and then you would have obviously more time there. Okay, I want a few of these. Um, I would say at least three, one, two, three, and then you know, you're starting to get back down to the other side. One, two, three, and then I start to slow down. Okay, and still here it seems a bit tight, right? There, a bit slow. Okay, so now that's that part of just animating that thing and getting the timing set up for this. Okay, now this one I wouldn't do the copy and paste keyframes. You can do that, you don't have to. I would literally go through and just try to deduce what would be happening each frame. Okay, so in this case, and this is typically the mistake that people make when they do this one, is as this thing is going this way, what is our driving force in this whip type thing? The bottom. So what should be moving first? The bottom, okay? So in all of our rotations here, the bottom should be the first one, okay? So as we do this, we would grab this, and I start off at the bottom, so I say, at here, this is zero, I set a key. I go up to this. Let's see, right about there where it hits. Okay, I'm just using this. I could write out each number. It's useless. Don't write out each number. Okay, just watch it, figure out where it stops, and then set your key for where that should be rotated, which is like this. Okay, so he's going to go from here, whoop, like that. Okay. Now here comes the tricky part. What's going to happen after he does this? All the other ones will right. It flips the other way. Okay. So here's where the animation gets a little bit different than the one we're currently doing because now we have to go, it goes here, it hits that and flips. So I'm going to go a couple frames after six and flip it. So now we go like this and it flips. And then the other side is going to do the same thing. We go here, right about there, and then we go here, and it flips that way. Okay. 
and it's going to look clunky. It's going to look super horrible until we start getting in there and starting to fill in the gap with these other guys. Even though we can't see it right now, these other guys are going to really help that animation go along. It's really going to help sell the fact that this thing is whipping over every time it goes in there. Okay? So for now, your goal for the rest of today is to just go through and just start setting those initial keyframes of this little platform bouncing back and forth and coming to rest and then those other pieces doing that same thing. Okay? And I would do the same thing. I would go grab this guy and I'd say, okay, well, when does he start moving? I'm going to set a keyframe here. Obviously, I could do this in the graph editor or the dope sheet. Okay? And he's going to start to flip over, let's say, about there. And he'll be flipped over at about there. Okay? So you can see this. All right? And again, it's going to look clunky. Right now, just set those initial keyframes. It'll come together just going through that process that we just did. Don't be afraid to look at the dope sheet. And don't be afraid to literally just sit there and think about what this thing should be doing. Okay? What should happen to each one of these pieces? The top's not going to move until that next piece tells it to move, until that piece tells it, until that piece tells it, until the base tells it to move. Okay? So think about that as you're working and think about the physics of it and then we'll just keep going from there, okay? So we'll work on this today, we'll work on it more next class and the next class after that. Good?